Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, Technical Director here at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. This is part two of Pure Storage and vRealize Automation. In this video, we're going to look at configuring your content catalog and importing workflows from vRealize Orchestrator into VRA. So let's create anything as a service blueprints. So the first step is you want to actually import the workflows you want to provision to your end users as catalog items. These are things for requesting VMs, data stores, storage, switches, whatever. All anything as a service, or sometimes called infrastructure as a service, work is done under the design tab. To import a VRO workflow into VRA, I choose infrastructure as a service blueprints. I can expand and see my VRO inventory in all of my workflows. I have the flash array plugin installed, so I have my flash array workflows. I'm first going to select add flash array connection. This actually adds an entire flash array into my inventory. You can customize the input and customize how this is actually seen by the end user. You can change strings into hard-coded text. You can change it to drop downs, drill downs. You can have pre-selected values they can choose. Here, I'm going to hard code the username and password for adding a flash array so they don't have to know it or enter it themselves. What I can do is change it to a constant value and then change the visibility to always know. This way it's hard coded and the end user doesn't even see the field. I'll do the same thing for a password. You can hard code it if you want and let them see it or I'm going to hard code it and then change the visibility once again to be constantly no. All these values though can be dynamic, they can be based on different things. There's quite a lot of customization that you can build into uh, managing vRealize Automation Infrastructure as a Service Blueprints presentation layers. So now that I'm satisfied with the input, I can move on. Now I choose what does this workflow actually return to my end user. I chose Flash Array. This means that this workflow is going to return a Flash Array object into my user's item inventory in VRA. Now I can run through and add a few more workflows. The, every workflow I add through this will create a new catalog item that can be used and provisioned to end users. I'll choose another one. This is a VMware and Pure type of workflow. This creates a volume, presents it to a VMware cluster, rescans, and formats with VMFS to create a data store. The output of this workflow is going to be a data store as I just chose, and we'll complete it. Now that sets up my catalog items. Of course, you can do many, many more. The next step is once someone owns one of those items, what do you want to do with it? That's called resource actions. So I'm going to import resource actions. And once again, this is looking at my vRealize orchestrator workflows. I can choose a workflow, and these are workflows I want someone to run against an object type once they actually own it. So I'm going to do expand data store. The input parameter is a data store. So if someone owns a data store, they can run this. Since this changes my data store, it's going to dispose of the original object and reprovision it because it's been changed. And it's going to return that new expanded data store. I can also manage the inputs. Since I'm running this on an object that gets passed in, I can delete the select data store as it's not needed. I can keep on running and adding more resource actions. This one, I can choose, what do I also want to add on to it? Well, maybe I want to remove the flash array once I've provisioned it, because I'm done with it. This allows someone to remove it, and I'll just select Disposal. That will not only um, remove it from their inventory, but also remove it from the underlying vRealize Orchestrator inventory. But of course, you can configure that as well. I'll continue to add new resource actions. Of course, there are built-in workflows that you can choose from, from our vRealize Orchestrator plugin for the flash array. Or, of course, you can create your own. This workflow will take in a volume and then create a snapshot. So I'll choose provisioning and then snapshot. So it will return that snapshot back to that end user's inventory. This one will create a volume. It takes in a flash array connection and then it will provision and return a volume. Now, of course, you don't have to have it return an object back to VRA if you don't want to. That's certainly an option. The flash array will be automatically passed in, so I can remove that input box as well and finish that process. I 
I'll choose another VMware Impure workflow. This takes in a VMware data store, a VMFS, and creates a snapshot. So once again, I want someone to own that snapshot they create. So I'll select provisioning and choose the snapshot object that gets returned. So I've now created all the resource actions I want. The next step is to publish them. When you're done creating your, your resource actions, you need to publish them. That passes them off to the other administrator that might be the one that actually adds them to services and gives, gives them to users. You might just have a single XAAS architect and then someone else managing the content catalog. You do this for both your XAAS blueprints and the resource actions when you're ready for them to be used. So now let's create an approval. Sometimes when someone runs a workflow, you might want it to be first approved by an administrator before it completes. This can, this can be done in a variety of ways of having any administrator create a certain level or multiple levels of approvals. This allows the administrators to be involved in the process but not actually have to create or manage the object. So I'll go into administration and then approval policies and choose a catalog item request. Now I'm going to give it a name, just something simple, approve. And then I'll change the status to active so this can actually be used as an approval policy. Then I'll give a level for approvals. And I'll also add my cloud admin as the approving person. Once again, you can create a group or multiple different users if you want to. And there are a variety of options of having anyone approve or everybody approve. And as I said, you can do multiple levels before and after the workflows run. This one will be before. So my approval policy is complete. Now let's create an entitlement. Entitlements are essentially associations of a certain service and resource actions saying, hey, anyone in this service, and I'll name it just actions, has the ability to run these resource actions if they happen to own that object type. So the first thing I'll do is I'll choose my service. And remember, that's associated with a business group. Then I want to associate an approval policy. I'm going to associate an approval policy with adding an entirely new flash array. And so if someone runs that catalog item, they have to get approval when it's run. And the last thing, I'll import my resource actions into this entitlement. So any user that runs a workflow and then has an item provisioned, if they're in this entitled service and that business group, they'll be able to run these resource actions on that item. Once again, only if they own an item of that item type. So if someone owns a flash array, they'll be able to create a volume or remove that flash array. I'll finish it to complete the entitlement. The next step is I can configure my catalog items. I can give them special icons. Once again, we have this icon pack you can download and also associate these catalog items with a service. Just like I associated those resource actions with a service in the entitlements, I want to also associate that catalog item with a service. I'll complete this and add my icons and associate them both with a service. Selecting new and noteworthy will make my end users see it automatically when they log into the tenant. I'll do the same process with my actions. I can choose my separate actions, the ones I've imported in that entitlement or anyone. This lists all the available actions, whether they're actually inside of an entitlement or not. And I can add my icons. I'll continue to do this for all of my resource actions. Now I'm doing all this first, but none of these, this step is not necessarily required. It just makes it a little bit more intuitive when the user sees separate object types for different, different resource actions. This makes it a little bit easier to consume and a little bit more user friendly from an interface standpoint. Once it's been added to the entitlement and those users are active, they'll be able to run these catalog items and resource actions as needed. If you do not specify, um, icons here, it'll just inherit the icon type from vRealize Orchestrator. So I'll complete my icon importing. And 
and associate it for my create snapshot. And we'll complete. We're now done setting up our catalog items and resource actions. If we go to our catalog, we can see those two catalog items that I provisioned are now available to be run. Thanks and check out part three.